Um, it all depends if uh, if how many uh, more uh, Knesset members from the coalition will make the right decisions that Edith Tillman took this morning. <clears throat> if it will be uh, a one or two, then um, then there will be uh, uh, the the only option will be to go to uh, to elections. Uh, if we'll get a 61 uh, majority to support a new government. Uh, we can uh, have a new government without going to election in the current uh, Knesset. That's uh, that's the rules uh, in the Knesset. Um, and I think that the, the second that people will understand um, that this government, uh, uh, the days of uh, those days are numbers are numbered, um, then uh, then I believe more people from the coalition, uh, from different parties. Uh, we'll we'll make the right decision. We'll live it. Uh, we'll live and and make uh, and make sure they have uh, room in the coming government. Um, if we're not, we're gonna have to go to election. We'll, we'll come back to you for some more questions here, Dr. Schwartz. Want to bring you into the conversation as well. Philosophically, let's put it this way: How badly does this development undermine the entire coalition under Prime Minister Bennett, already sitting on a party of just six seats? Uh, first of all, good afternoon, David. Thank, for, thank you for having me. Uh, during the time when Israel was in a tizzy of elections, four in a period of one and a half or two years, I was a frequent guest in your studio. And uh, although I always enjoy being hosted by uh, 24 <laughs> News, I was actually somewhat relieved that for uh, quite a time I was not invited back <laughs> precisely because what this government, with all of its weaknesses, with all of its intrinsic uh, challenges, nevertheless did deliver to the Israelis, the Israeli public, was stability and governability. Uh, not that it, not that it was a government that uh, didn't make mistakes. Of course, every government is fallible, and it made mistakes. But it did promise to unite large parts of the Israeli voting public from left to right, Arab, Jewish, religious, non-religious, um, and bring back the notion that the the um, Members of Knesset, legislators, elected officials are here to serve us and not the reverse. And for a time, including the passing of a budget, uh, Israel was in a state of fiduciary chaos for over two years. This government was able to pass a budget and get get to the work of governing, which is something that uh, Israelis had had almost forgotten that that's the primary role of government. Your your question was, what does this mean philosophically? And without sounding uh, too cynical, I don't think the issue of philosophy or ideology, ideology figures in at all. Um, if we take um, the, the coalition whip, at least until this morning, Edith Silman's remarks at face value, she did what she did in order to safeguard uh, Jewish values of the Jewish identity of the state, which if if uh, some of your viewers might not be aware that at least the pretext for this was the um, degree to which the hospitals in this country would observe the uh, uh, Kashrut regulations during the Passover uh, week. Um, but of course, to, to the seasoned observer and even to the average citizen, more than safeguarding uh, the values of the oldest religion in the world, I think her behavior is much more consistent with the oldest profession in the world, uh, metaphorically speaking. Um, and I don't think it fools anyone. Today, she's being heralded by the Likud and their supporters in the opposition as someone who had who had made the right decision. Um, but she obviously forgot or prefers to forget the fact that she was subject to abuse and ridicule, including physical threats, uh, coming from those same circles that she seems so willing to uh, to embrace now. And the fact, well, I shouldn't say the fact, it's been reported, and apparently there's some substantiation for this, that she's been offered a um, uh, the post of health minister in a future Likud-led government or Netanyahu-led government. Um, at least, I think, uh, lend some perspective to her decision. Uh, not a particularly noble one, but from the perspective of uh, expediency on her part, makes a lot of sense. Two-pronged question for you. How long was it known that Suleiman would leave the governing coalition? And is Benjamin Netanyahu the next prime minister of Israel? Um, of course, different people knew at different times. Uh, some uh, some people that were more involved knew for a few days or for a few uh, and saw the saw it coming for even before. 
but um, I think the majority, even the, even of the Knesset members, who learned from it and for the first time um, today. But I have to say, th those kind of things, uh, no one really knows until the decision is made, because uh, every second uh, uh, the person uh, uh, can change his mind back. So, so it's it ain't over until it's over. So, um, so that's uh, that's about that time. But um, who will be the next prime minister of Israel? Um, no one, no one can tell. Again, it, it depends a lot on on the two uh, scenarios that we talked about before. If we're going to another election, or we're trying to form a government within this uh, uh, this Knesset with uh, with uh, to to a new coalition, and then all the then the the different parties will uh, find themselves uh, in other situations. Uh, but I have to say, and and I think that the most I think most people will uh, will uh, learn a lot that the issue that made this coalition collapse is the issue of Israel as the homeland of the Jewish people. Um, that's the main core issue. Um, I think that everyone understands that all the political promises that been that have been made to. Uh, to Edith Silman or to any other uh, person that uh, offered to quit this coalition are on the table for a long, long time. It's nothing new. What is new is that, and, and I'm going a little bit against the, uh, the other speaker, uh, the public in Israel, and we see it in the numbers, and we see it in the polls, and we see it uh, does not like what he sees, does not like a fa the fact that um, the government may say that it's governing and they pass a budget or any other issue, but the majority of the public in Israel, and definitely the majority of the Jewish public in Israel, wants Israel to be the homeland of the Jewish people, want Israel to be a Jewish state. And when this is, when this uh, aspect of Israel is being threatened by the coalition, um, it lost its right of existence. Dr. Schwartz, coming back to you on this and talking about the majority, talking about the votes. On the Israeli electorate, let's discuss that for a minute. So exhausted from political campaigns over and over, as you touched on here. How important is it now for these various political parties to avoid another round of elections? Um, I, I've stated a, a number of times, specifically when being interviewed by your station, just how destructive successive rounds of elections are for this country. I'm not even talking about the sheer cost, but in terms of the draining of uh, public faith in state institutions, because in each round of elections, what precipitated those elections were usually very narrow interests, typically around a, the, the political fate of a single individual. And the public recognized that this, um, and here I'm not talking about ideology, I'm not talking about the Jewish character of the state, I'm talking about the basic faith of Israeli citizens in the institutions of state. And here I don't distinguish between the Jewish majority or the Arab minority. Um, so I think it's it's extremely destructive that we're that we might be looking at yet another round uh, of elections. Um, people like to talk about how divided Israeli society is during the past four rounds of elections. What people perhaps forget is that Israeli society has been divided, particularly the Jewish majority, divided between right and left, however that's been defined, pretty much since the early 80s. Uh, it found expression in the first rotational government between uh, the Likud and Labour, Shimon Peres and Shamir. Um, and it's essentially, although the various uh, uh, permutations and shifting alliances of Israeli politics may have obscured this at one point, so Kadima, Yeshatid, for the most part, the public is divided um, between liberal and less liberal, liberal and traditional, um, and that remains in force. And if we do have another round of elections, there's no reason to think that the results will be any different. Mr. I Rothman, find it, uh, I come back to you on that point exactly here. You're talking about bridging the gaps here, and, and we've seen one figure emerge trying to do that in recent years, Benny Gantz, now the defense minister, who emerged from some of those elections with a lot of the electorate behind him here. Uh, Simcha, if you can tell us, are there contacts with Benny Gantz at this point? Um, and, uh, of course, any contacts uh, concerning uh, new coalition agreements is not to be made uh, public. Um, those things uh, usually go uh, behind closed doors. Uh, but I'm, I have to say, Benny Gantz um, could have been 
And he said that for many, he was supposed to be uh, of some kind of a centric uh, party, not too much to the left, not too much to the right. Um, sadly, in the past year, past uh, nine months especially, he took a, a sharp turn to the left. He started to have uh, to have uh, um, um, to invite uh, Abu Mazen um, and, uh, to, and into his house. Um, he uh, he um, put all the pressure on the settlements. He uh, um, tried to evacuate Chomesh. He uh, f he, folk he gave a loan to the Palestinian Authority to pay uh, for uh, for the terrorists' uh, salaries. Um, so he, he made a lot of uh, policy calls that are very, very uh, associated, that are associated heavily with the left. And um, if he wants to return and to become a centric party, uh, currently he's not on the right path. I hope he will be. Well, we'll stay tuned for any developments. We want to thank you both for uh, addressing the uh, major development that it is today. Dr. Raviv Schwartz and Israeli lawmaker Simcha Rockman. Thank you both.